Hi Deepinauts and welcome to this Friday's video which is just a comparison between the VPNs and the DPNs. So we're going to get straight into what a VPN is. A VPN is a virtual private network and the DPN and VPN are pretty similar. So imagine that this is the world and you're in the northwest of the US and you connect to a server in Australia, a VPN server which is owned and controlled by a VPN. So for example NordVPN or Express VPN, which is a big biggie. Now you want to access a website that's in, in Australia, so you connect to the VPN node in Australia, and then you connect to the to the website in Australia. And what it does is it passes it back. So the website will pass the information from wherever it is to the VPN server, and the VPN server will then pass it back to you. So you have that hop. So it goes from you to the VPN server to the website, and then back. So as far as the websites that you visit are concerned, your IP address is in Australia. So you can access their Netflix, websites that are only available in Australia, loads of different like streaming things, holiday sites, and that's really, really cool. However, there's a big problem with a, a VPN specifically. Now, if you look at the map, you can see that you've got you in the northwest. But let's just make one little change, which will make this fit for what a DPN is. So now you can see that we're not now going to a centralized computer or a network connection. We're actually connecting to a deeper DPN node or a decentralized node. And that node isn't owned by a registered corporation that might keep logs, that might see who you are. You've had to give them your credit card information so they know your name, your address, whereabouts you live. Um, and you now connect us to somebody else's node in, say, Australia. But well, you don't know who, who they are and they don't know who you are. And Deeper Network doesn't know who you are because at no point do you give Deep, Deeper Network your name and address. You might buy the device, but the devices aren't linked to you. So nobody knows who you are. And this is the beauty of decentralization. A judge cannot subpoena whoever owns the node and they can't subpoena Deep, Deeper Network because there's no information to get. The police could knock on my door now and say, we want to know who connected to your node at this time. I'll be like, yeah, okay, two people did. The IP address begins with this, and that's all I've got. And there's nothing they can do about it. And that is the beauty of this. Um, we're going to go through the top three VPNs and their procedures in a second. Um, but yeah, so this is how it basically works. You connect to somebody else and then they connect to the website and then it passes it back. With a corporation, it's their commercial networks that do do this. Um, with Deeper, you connect to a person's node in their house and use their band bandwidth to download the information you actually want. So that's basically the uh, semi-techie side of it. But what about the end user side? Because obviously a lot of people don't care about that. All they want is... How can I use it? Can I get it on my phone? Is it cheap? You know, um, is it reliable? Is it fast? Stuff, stuff like that. So what I've done is, is I've picked three of the top VPNs, the commercially available ones. You've got NordVPN, ExpressVPN, and Surfshark. Now, just to give a quick review kind of thing of this, um, I contacted these three to find out how safe they really are and how they work. So NordVPN was probably one of one of one of the best um 56 pounds 85 a year every year loads of ser servers and their physical servers as well so they actually have physical network computers so that's brilliant and they have a genuine no record log uh, policy so they don't log information whatsoever uh, and i did go through with this with them and uh yeah they just don't it's, it's great um but it is £56.85 a year, so why would you do that? Because you can go a DPN and get it even better. But let's go on to the next company, ExpressVPN. I contacted these guys, and oh my god, I would never use ExpressVPN ever, ever. So it's the most expensive at £82.03 for the first year. And when I asked them how many tunnels or um, servers they actually have, they didn't know. As I said, you've got to know how many um, servers you have. And they went, no, I haven't got that information. I'm like, right, okay, well, that's that's pretty bad. 
I then asked, um, are there tunnels hardware backed? So when you connect to, say, Bangladesh, is there a physical device in Bangladesh which does everything for you? And he said, no, you'll connect to a server in the UK and then you'll have a virtual connection to an online server in Bangladesh. And I'm like, so who subpoenas who then? Because if you're connecting to a server in the UK and that does all the work, that means the UK government can subpoena you, which defeats the purpose of connecting to Bangladesh. Why doesn't that put you guys at risk? And he goes, no, because you get a Bangladesh IP. And I was like, no, that is just like, no, nah, no, nah, I'm completely out. And records, they, they do take records. Um, they don't take specific information. So they, they ask like, which, which, uh, which country you connected to, what time, what date. They don't store what you did. Um, but obviously that's still more information than what you would want them to have. And I, I just couldn't believe it. So if you're thinking of going with ExpressVPN, just don't, okay? And the third VPN provider was Surfshark. Now Surfshark were actually really good. I spoke to them and the guy knew his stuff. And they have, uh, it's the cheapest at forty seven ninety two a year. They have over 3,200 uh, nodes around the world. And there are some virtual servers to get around like the bans or where the government wants more information. Um, but if you if 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 the government isn't as bad as that, then yet they have a physical one, and they have a genuine zero log uh, port policy as well. I was really impressed with their Surfshark. You can also order a static IP, which I thought was pretty cool. Okay, so enough ad advertisement on Surfshark um, and Nord and trashing on Express v VPN, but they really deserve it. But let's just move move on. So VPNs do have a couple of benefits over DPNs, but that's it's not many. DPNs really outweigh them, or do the same as them and then outweigh them. So um, the VPNs have really good software. They usually have an app or a desktop app, so that you can just download it, pay for the subscription for the year with your credit card, and it's done. You just turn it on, pick where you want to be, and it's done. Um, they are centralized. So if, say, Netflix detects that you're using a VPN... It's probably because they've realised that a lot of people are using the same IP address, so they've 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 blocked it. You might have to wait for the for the VPN to then get another one, um, or you might be able to switch to like another one, but then that one might might get blocked. That's the problem with having centralised nodes, where you'll have like one node, but there'll be like a hundred people who are who are on that one one node. That's where the DPN really really wins. All of the commercially available VPNs are also subscription. So you have to pay every single year. Some of them are expensive, and you can see ExpressVPN is eighty-two pounds and three pence. That's like a hundred and five dollars a year. Um, whereas you could get a deeper device, pay one hundred and twenty-five dollars, and it's yours for life. But um, yeah, it's expensive. The next point is records and personal details. Now, they are stored because when your subscription runs out and they want to make money, they'll email you and they'll say. John Smith, renew your subscription. It costs so much. Click now to auto-renew. So just that right there, they have your name, your email address, they have your card information on file. That will include your home address or whatever the card is reg registered to. And yeah, that's pretty bad. Deeper doesn't have any of that. They don't know who's doing what. So if a subpoena came through on Deeper, they'd say, we don't know who the guy is. We don't know what he's done. So can you leave us alone, please? And that is the beauty of a DPN. It's decentralized. You can't stop it. It's just there to stay. And it's a real free way of using the internet until somebody tries to ban it, of course. So let's go on to the final point, and that is that the free VPNs, the, real, the ones you've never heard of, don't use them. If you need a VPN, just don't bother, okay? Take out a trial with one of the ones at the top, except for ExpressVPN, or use the DPN app or the deeper network D device because the information that you've put through there, you have no idea what's going on with that. They're keeping records. They could be sniffing everything out of your traffic that you would not want anybody to see. So please do not use a free VPN. 
All right, especially not one that you've never heard of. It's just, just top top of the list. So now let's get on with the DPN. So we're going to go through the benefits and the three main ones that are out there at the minute. So obviously starting from the left, it's why we're all here, deep network. It's hardware based. It's a free DPN forever. That's if you have the hardware, not if you have the app. The app beta testing is coming next month and there's going to be a desktop app, Linux app, iOS app, Android app, all those apps. It's going to have all the apps. And uh, it is completely decentralized where the DPN is, so you can't stop it. It's going to continue to work. When we get more uh, va validators, obviously that will make the network way stronger. I'm going to be one soonish, so we'll see. Um, and we have 45,000 nodes. That's way more than any VPN or DPN on the market, which is really cool. The next one is Mysterium. Now, Mysterium's been around for quite a while. It's not as big as uh, D Deeper Network. However, it is software-based for the DPN. If you want to mine, that's hardware-based. But, you know, if you want to just use the DPN, it's software-based. They do have the full range of apps. I heard that they're doing the app beta testing next month but they have the Android app on their website. So maybe they haven't actually got the Android app, but it's just like a tester. Who knows? It's not free. You do have to pay $2.49 a month, which is pretty cheap. And they have 15,000 servers worldwide. So that's pretty much the closest to a VPN you can get price-wise. Um, but they have more than 15,000 servers, which is way more than any VPN as well. It's pretty cool. And lastly, we have Sentinel. So Sentinel is one that I haven't really heard much of, but I've been on the website and it's pretty smart. So it's software based. They only have apps, but they have apps for everything. Linux, perhaps not. They, um, it's software based. It's, I think it's free. They kind of had have nodes which are downloaded and hosted by users who mine pretty much the same as what deep, deep, deeper network does. Um, so I think it might actually be, be free for everybody to use. Other than that, there's not much information. The website doesn't give you that much. Um, the price ticker for the crypto doesn't work. It doesn't tell you how many tunnels there are, how many nodes there are. And yeah, but if they've got all of those apps, so they have desktop apps and it's free and it is decentralized, that's really smart. And all three of these, regardless of which one you go for, is better than any of the VPNs on the previous page. So it's brilliant. So let's do this checkbox thing again. So decentralized, no tracking or records, totally private. And that is true, especially for deeper networks. I haven't really used the other two much, but it is definitely private. It's either cheap or it's free. So with the deeper, you buy the device. And then when you put the device in your network, the DPN is free for life. That That is it. The other one's Mysterium, two forty nine a month for decentralized networking is pretty good. And the last one, Sen Sentinel, I mean, if it's completely free, you can't get much more cost effective than that. And because all of these are really easy to set up, there's loads of nodes. I mean, Deep has got 45,000 nodes at any given day. They actually have sold about 100,000 de devices or something, but... Each day, there's at least around about forty to forty-five thousand nodes on online which you can use. Mysterium, fifteen thousand. Unknown about Sentinel, but you know, Nord VPN on the previous page had the most nodes, and that was only five thousand five hundred and summit. So, forty-five thousand nodes beats it hands down, and fifteen thousand nodes beats it hands down. So that is a massive plus. Each of the nodes are also unblockable too. So, for example, if you have a VPN and you've got 200 people using the same IP address to log into the same platform, so like Netflix, Netflix are going to go 200 people are using the same internet. Don't think so. And they block that IP address. With Deeper and the other ones, it won't do that because you'll only have one person, but perhaps two people using Netflix. You'll have yourself and you'll have the person who's connected to you. That's not enough to trigger that kind of thing. So, and even if it did, it won't. But if it did, you could just click refresh and you'll get a brand new IP or switch, switch, switch IP. And that's it. It's done. So, um, yeah, companies will not be able to block this, whether they want to or not. They just can't, which is great.
Okay, so let's get on with the final thoughts. So, obviously I'm pretty bullish on Deeper because I'm invested in it. I've got devices and things, so I wanted to do really well. I wanted to beat everybody else and so on, but I have to be fair and impartial on this. Any of the DPNs that I've listed, okay, so Mysterium, Sentinel, and Deeper, all three of those are way better than any of the VPNs which I mentioned at the start of the uh, video. And that's because it's decentralized. That is the key word. That's the future of Web3. Decentralization is going to be something which governments hate. And it's going to be something which we love. Because freedoms are getting taken away from us all the time. Especially in the West. Well, and the East as well. Um, and they're pushing and pushing and pushing. And decentralization and Web3... And the Web3 infrastructure, which Deeper is building, and it's doing a great job. It's got a lot of investment and a lot of things planned. And and that is what we want, because in order to be free, we need stuff like this. Because the government is going to ban everything. All right, I mean, the TikTok ban, which is actually the Restrict Act in the States, that's terrifying. And that is coming. And then it'll come to the UK. And then it'll come to France and Germany and everywhere else, and decentralization where they can't possibly stop it, that is what we need. So I hope this video has been useful to you. It's kind of explained what a DPN and what a VPN is and the pros and cons between them. And thanks for watching. Please like and subscribe. We're almost at 500 subs. Once we do, we'll have a mini SE giveaway on the next video after that. And then whoever wins, they win that and they can get it and they can connect to the network and that's one extra node. That is a giveaway that I'm doing. That's got nothing to do with Deeper or YouTube. I've got to say that. Um, so yeah, so like and subscribe and we'll get to 500 quicker and then we can do the draw. I also have another com competition coming as well and it's going gonna, it's gonna to be massive. So keep tuned for that. Thanks guys. Appreciate it. Have a nice week weekend and I'll see you on Sunday.